renowned for its magical sunrises, miles of gorgeous beaches, and a range of backpacker resorts. At first glance, it's paradise. The Yasao stretches for 80 kilometers, an archipelago located in the western side of Fiji, consists of six main islands and numerous small islands. In reality, the villagers live far from the paradise that first meets the eye. In fact, the villagers struggle from day to day, with immense shortage of clean drinking water, little to no health services or facilities, poor nutrition, a lack of educational support, inadequate power, and no substantial way of life in the future. For this reason, the ministry decided to bring to the SAWA the rights, empowerment, and cohesion reach for rural and urban Fijian projects, led by the Honorable Minister of Women, Children, and Poverty Education, Honorable Mary Singh Muriwaka. The REACH project promotes peace building, social cohesion through awareness of rights, access to services, the provisions of legal advice, and institution capacity building. Okay, this is a mini uh, ministry's visit uh, for the first time to their hours to uh, basically uh, bring the REACH program, which has been uh, very instrumental in getting our services out to members of the public, especially those living in rural areas which I guess is one of the main aims of which. And uh, it's good to see that uh, it's been uh, very appreciated here in those hours. Uh, not only the social welfare and the, uh, aspect of uh, the services, but also our stakeholder services. Working closely with various stakeholders is vital. Since its inception in 2010, the Winaka Fiji Trust has been doing work to improve the provisions of basic needs and amenities missing from village life in the hours. Um, when we first started earlier in 2011, uh, we just took over the development plan that was in the Commissioner Weston's office and the Bar Provincial office. From there, we did come back to the community and do some consultation and came up with a plan uh, of what program to put in the community. It also seeks to do this both to direct aid and by acting as a facilitator, bringing those who can help together with the landowners and residents consult with the community and come up with a plan. And with the schedule, uh, once everything is discussed with uh, uh, the coordinator concerned in the area they work, and also other uh, departments in government, and also the volunteers that come from overseas, then I make a plan and this is given down to our coordinator to implement on the ground with the community. With Yasawa being a predominantly tourist destination, Looking for a market will never be a problem. The good thing about the women of their side is like the women of uh, Palolo is that uh, they have a market readily available to them, uh, which has been one of the main challenges for us as a ministry, to find uh, sustainable markets for the work, uh, the income generating projects that women undertake in the various communities. But here they have the market at the doorstep on a daily basis. With the available of the market, the ministry is looking at ways of enhancing and taking their products to a new level. So as a ministry, we see it as um, one of our priorities now to work with the women to diversify the products that they're already producing. Here in Navutkua, it's uh, they're already at that level. They are doing uh, virgin coconut oil, there's noni products, there's um, uh, soap, there's uh, chips uh, made from breadfruit and uh, wundi, which just grows around the villages. So it's good that they're using uh, natural resources within their communities to earn an income for themselves and their families. The other aspect of the tour was the Tolo sessions. These sessions were a chance for women to express their desires to the minister on ways of better empowering their lives and their communities as well. Apart from the REACH program, there's also the empowerment of women side of things that uh, it's so good to come out to the islands and see how the various women's groups are uh, generating income for themselves, for their families, for their communities. The ministers happy to be part of the Western Craft Show, where seven villages from the Tikino Laguna displayed their crafts. I'm very happy to see that it also has the full support of the Manua. This uh, was basically an initiative that came through the, the uh, Tikina meeting and they've all agreed so we had a few villages there showcasing the work, uh, the handicraft of women. Uh, it's also uh, a great build-up 
to the Divisional Craft Show, which uh, the Ministry will be hosting in a few months' time uh, in readiness for the National Women's Expo 2019. For the Ministry, this was the perfect opportunity to assess their product. It was an opportunity for us to, and for the Department of Women to see the, the various products that they had, the quality and uh, where they have sourced it from. Uh, it was an opportunity for us to also talk to the women, to tell them about um, what we require in relation to the National Women's Expo and uh, the, the types, the quality and the sourcing of raw materials for the products that they can showcase at the National Women's Expo. So yes, I am glad that um, I'm really happy that they've managed to do that on a district basis and uh, we've also encouraged them to take part in the uh, divisional one that's uh, upcoming. By having similar craft shows such as this throughout the East hours, the Ministry is hoping to increase the number of participation in the 2019 National Women's Expo. If we, if we look at uh, the numbers uh, for the 2018 National Women's Expo, we only had eight women from the whole of the Yasawa group. So we'd like to encourage more uh, women of Yasawa to come forward. And uh, it's uh, also an opportunity, I got to see the Yasawa map, which is unique to this part of the world. And it's something that uh, we may not have uh, seen enough at the National Women's Expo. Um, and uh, it's something we also want to encourage. Uh, the women living in rural areas, uh, particularly when they're looking at income generating projects, when they're looking at uh, making handicraft for income generation, they should also consider the cultural aspect of things. There are certain cultural artifacts that are unique to their Vanua, to their communities. We also encourage that they focus on this because that also has a very big market out there. We've seen this with the uh, Papua, the mat, which is unique to Lomai Viti. We've seen it to the, uh, with the, another type of mat, the Kandivili Vili, also unique to Nairai. Uh, it's also, it, they've made a lot of money out of that during the expo. So yes, you can earn an income for yourself, for your family, for your community, and at the same time, uh, protect your cultural artifacts. That's something we also encourage. Also on the trip was the disability unity, who had wheelchairs, walkers, and walking sticks on hand for anyone in need of them. Smiles from those who received the wheelchairs said it all, as the minister presented wheelchairs to those in need of one. The team also had a chance to go on a team building exercise. The first part of the exercise, the groups were divided into teams who had half an hour to reflect and discuss the various issues that was raised during the week, followed by a team building exercise organized by Vinaka Fiji. The team building today is uh, uh, the amazing race. We'll do it uh, the Fijian way where we see the skills that uh, is brought in by the uh, team uh, Ministry of Women. Uh, as we say, we have different skills, we bring it together uh, to be able to be productive. So with this one, they will be weaving, and after weaving, they will be husking coconuts, scraping coconuts, and then the end will be to kayak. Uh, that's the team building exercise today. As the sun set on our last night in the magical Yasawas, we look back at the week-long visit and ponder on the day-to-day -day struggles faced by the people of the Yasawas. The trip also gave the Ministry a clear direction on how to address the various issues in the daily struggles. <laughs>